There is something important about receiving people. And of course, receiving people is a handshake and greeting somebody, but the scripture is very clear on when you receive someone, you also receive who they are, not only in the natural, of course, but you receive what God has given them. And there's something about also being aware of who you are in the moment when you are walking with people, being with people, because you are unique. You are wonderfully made, as the scripture says, but you are a gift of God. Why don't you say that with me? I am a gift of God. Oh, come on, say it. I am a gift of God. And as you meet people, walk with people, hang out, just realize they're receiving you, but they're also receiving the gift God has placed in you. Everybody has a measure, a metron. The scripture talks about a, a measured out weight, a measured out substance from the Lord Jesus Christ given to you. It's a grace gift that he gives you. He portions it out. The reason I'm saying this is this is in you. Every single one of you have a grace gift to give out. And Christ gave it to you. So as you walk with one another, serve one another, realize you always have something to give. And some, someone always has something to give to you. And in saying that this morning, just know that about your life. But I'm saying that also for Darren this morning. He, he's a prophetic man. He's a shepherd. And I want you to understand and receive that gift this morning. Okay? So the Spirit of God, the wind of God, the hand of God, the grace of God. All right? No pressure, Darren. Or I say, no pressure, Darren. Come on. Give us what you got. Okay, some pressure. I'll give you pressure. They don't have to give you pressure. Let's welcome Darren this morning. Amen. Hey, sixth grade and under. Hey, there's, there's actually a funny story about that. I, when, I was a, when I was about in sixth grade, my parents owned a pharmacy, and we did inventory once a year, and my parents always made me do the calculator thing. And my brain, after about 12 hours of calculator, was so worn out. The next day in church, pastor wanted to pray for someone, but it was time to let the kids go. And I kid you not, he brought this person up to pray, and I stood up and I said, Pastor, you forgot to let the kids go. And my dad's hand was on my back and was pulling me down into the seat because I was not going to let that go. So, kids, I understand. Sixth grade, sixth grade and under, go on. We, you don't need to sit here. <laughs> you don't need to be with me. Well, good. Is it still morning? Good morning? Okay. Let's set some ground rules. One is this mine. <laughs> it can't. It, it's... It, it's all right. It, it says Starbucks on it. I'm just, you know. oh, oh, ooh. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to do that. I will, I will spill this, so don't get freaked out when it spills. Um, ground rule number two. I am by trade. Well, by trade. That's, that's actually it. I'm a teacher. I'm a Bible college teacher. Okay, so what happens is, is I ask rhetorical questions, things like that. They are actually rhetorical. However, I expect a response because I am a teacher. Does that make sense? All you who have ever been through school, you understand that, right? The teacher asks a rhetorical question, you're like, duh. Answer it anyway. Does that make sense? Ground rule number two, answer it anyway. Number three, if I'm going to be comfortable, either you have to talk back to me because I can't see you at all. You understand that, right? These lights right here is all I can see. So... Which is good because uh, uh, Mike actually told me, you end when I fall asleep. I can't see him. I'm here all day. <laughs> right? So, right? right? See, that's a rhetorical question where you go, duh, but I expect the response. Right? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay? If I say something good because I need to know you're out there, you, were like, you need to say, all right. Amen. That's fire. Ooh. Okay. That's fire will work, apparently. Tucson knows a lot about heat, I've found out. So that's fire is good. Um, 
just just go ahead and talk back to me. Because if you don't, you'll hear me say over and over and over again, did you get that? Is that okay? Did you understand that? It's just easier if you amen me up the up up front. Amen. We're, we're getting it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh yeah. See, rhetorical question you answered. I can move on. I don't have to go over and over again. Okay? So by, that's just who I am by trade. It really has nothing to do with any of you, so don't be offended by it. It's just something that I need when I talk. I need the response. I need the amens because that's just who I am. Thanks, guys. See, we're, we're off to a great start. Also, just so you know, when you do that, we get done faster. See? Now we're speaking the same language. You understand how I work, and I understand you don't want me to be standing here. It's like, let's get done. I get it. No, I know, uh, I know that you all are wonderful. I, I do hope that I at least get to say hey to everybody. Um, even though I can't see you, I will see you eventually when I walk down off this stage. Um, shall we start? How much time do I really have? What do you guys really expect? When do you guys want to be done? Really? For real? Man, that means a lot to me, too. You're, you're endearing me, too. I won't, I won't take long. I'm going to give you exactly what God gave me. Will that work? And we'll, and, and we'll let God do what he wants to do and be done. That's, that's what we're going to do. Now, I don't know how these camera things work, so whoever's running the camera, get on the joystick, and let's because I'm going to be all over the place. That's just how it is. All right, this is good. My goal today, let me, let me say it this way. My goal today, um, I felt like God said, open the door for this church. Okay? Now, don't get high expectations about that, okay? It's not like it's an 18 by 12 garage door that I'm going to fling wide open. But here's the thing. Sometimes when um, churches... Uh, I'm not going to say go through change, but you've just moved into this building, right? And, um, man, you've chosen a wonderful spot. There's a bar, a smoke shop, a tattoo parlor. Uh, you know, I'm not saying those things in and of themselves are bad, okay? I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to delineate. But you understand that there's people all over this city who need Jesus, and you guys got yourself in a shopping mall where you're right in the middle of all them people. Okay? That's just how it is. And so there is change that's going to happen here. And God has to prepare us as a church for that change. And here's what that means. What was can't stay. Okay? What was can't stay. Now, that doesn't mean everything that we did goes away. But what it means is that my approach and my view and who I am and how I see it and how God talks to me about it either has to grow or I have to get out of the way. Okay? Now, you listen, I, my bark is a lot bigger than my bite, okay? Don't think I'm trying to kick people out of the church, okay, or anything. I'm just trying to say, when God has those things in mind and he starts to push the door open, we better be ready for God to change and grow us. Not just individually, but as a body. Okay? And so everything, I'm I'm kind of prefacing all this to say, everything I'm about to say does apply to us individually, but I am talking about the body of Christ sitting in in these seats. Who is the body of Christ sitting in these seats? Okay, that was kind of weak and lame. I'm telling you, I'm a teacher by trade. I got to have response, okay? It's, that was a rhetorical question that was like, duh. Right, Uncle Angie? It was like, duh. We are, right? But I got to hear it anyway. It's what works in my head. Who here is in the body of Christ? So that means that we are going to change together, okay? We, we are going to change individually, Okay? God's going to pour anointing on us, but we got to grow and change together. Last time I was, was here, I gave a word about, about unity, God bringing unity. I'm telling you, I see it over and over and over every time I come into this city. 
I, I, I'm, I, by the Spirit, okay? Not naturally, because I haven't been to any of the churches in the city, so I can't really talk about them. But I know this. There's a lot of churches out there, and I think in this city, that are just country clubs with a spiritual name. Okay? High five. And then there's nothing wrong with high fiving and hanging out. Nothing wrong with it. Okay? But when you start slapping God's name on it and going, this is all the farther we're going to go in Jesus is we're going to high five and kind of hang out together and watch the Super Bowl together and watch the, what do you guys, you guys probably watch like bicycle road races and all that. Yes. <laughs> I got one amen. Everyone else is like, ooh. <laughs> Y'all know that was your pastor that just amen me, right? Okay. It's like, it's like you don't want a spiritual country club. You want a family that's moving together in Christ. You want grandmas and grandpas. You want aunts and uncles. You want brothers and sisters that are moving together in Christ. Well, the only way that happens is if the body grows together in what the body is supposed to do. And so today, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, what I felt like God said, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, uh, maybe because it's important for me and not so much for you. Christy will tell you, this trip was hard for us to take. Coming to Tucson, this, this one was hard. We had to get 100 things organized, 100 things taken care of. Um, we, uh, I'll be real honest with you. We came with one kid that was already sick. Um, we, we were trying to figure out schedules. It seemed like at every corner there was reasons not to be here. And I'm telling you, this morning... Um, God dropped this on my heart. And it was like God said, this is why you're here. <laughs> and I realized, you know what? The devil has been fighting every corner of the way. So I'm trying to give you the best I have in pushing a door open here. Okay? You ready? If you're with me, let's turn in our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. I know this church has probably preached this um, chapter uh, over and over again, I want to bring a slightly different take probably than you've heard this chapter in. Don't let it freak you out. It'll be okay. We'll, we'll, make, it, we'll make it work. If you're at Ephesians chapter 4, say amen. amen. All right, let me pray. God, I ask that in the next few minutes, these short few minutes, God, that you would do everything you want to do, that you would minister to hearts, God, that you would help people see where... They fit in what you're about to say. Amen. Amen. All right, verse 1. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity. Everybody say unity. unity. Of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Verse 7, but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Everybody run around the church yet? No, okay. Let's look at this for, for just a second. Okay, this is just my opener. This is just to start to put us um, on a foundation altogether. What has God called us to? Unity, right? And he uses the word one seven times here. One spirit, one faith, one baptism, one Lord. One, one, one. Why does he say that? Unity. Unity. I'm telling you, my answers are really easy, guys. It's okay. Unity. Why? Because when, when we walk together, there's strength. When we walk together, there's purpose. When we walk together, get this. Here's what Paul's actually doing. He's laying all this out, and he goes, the result is that each one of you have a grace given according to your gift. Not for yourself, but so that you can help someone else be one with you. I'm preaching hard. Can you tell? 
Come out. Is that all right? They all scared of me yet? You're like, well, this crazy guy from Missouri <laughs> starts yelling at us. <laughs> hey, if I yell at you, I'm really not mad. You can ask my kids. I yell at them all the time. Am I mad, girls? <laughs> girls, am I mad? <laughs> Are they back there? Oh, my. I said, no, <laughs> <I'm just laughs> it's a joke, it's a joke, y'all, it's a joke, okay, why, because that grace of God, the gift of God on your life, say my life, my life. is to help me walk with the person sitting next to me, listen, for some of you, y'all are sitting next to your spouse, <laughs> I got real quiet, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'll back off. I, I, that just <laughs> listen. You understand? You understand what I'm saying, though, right? We can look across the room and we're like, "I like that one, that one, that one." Him, I'm gonna stay away from her. Woo. Crazy. I'm just trying to be real today, okay? But here's what God doesn't leave us with. He doesn't leave us with the option to go eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I don't. I'm not gonna be around you. He gives us the option of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one spirit. And then he puts us together and we link arms and he goes, now your gift affects them and your grace affects them and your spirit affects them. And we got to walk together so that one works. And then he uses the word all four times. Because we don't get to choose when one works, we choose all the time, one works. Now, why is crazy man saying this to us? Here's why, okay? Look at the, let's, let's, take, let's just take Paul's mind for a minute, okay? The context of, of the book of Ephesians, okay? The apostle Paul worked in Ephesus for three and a half years, okay? He planted a church there. The way he planted the church was awesome, he just found 12 guys on the side of the road, laid hands on them. They started speaking in tongues and prophesying, and they're like, okay, we'll do that. He brings them into town, preaches at the synagogue for three months. The, the Jews are like, nope, we don't really like what you're saying, but everyone else is like, tell us more. So he goes next door to the, to the university, basically, not quite, but to the university, trade school. He goes, I'm going to teach you guys. And for two years, he meets with everyone. Acts chapter 19, verse 10 says, and all of Asia heard the gospel. Do you guys ever get freaked out when the Bible uses the word all? It, it scares me sometimes. Because you know God's not a liar, right? right? So when we say all, we sometimes think that's about 85, 90%. All of Asia. God's not a liar. So how many percent is it? 100%. See, I told you the answers are easy. You just have to participate. 100%. All of Asia heard the gospel. Paul, in two years, helped enough people with the grace and gift in his life to go, here's how you preach the gospel. Here's how you get with people. Here's how we walk together as one. And boom, all of Asia heard the gospel. All of Asia heard the gospel. Not one person was missing it. Now, they all didn't like it, but they all heard it. I live, I live in a county, this, is gonna, uh, this might ruin my whole thing here. I live in a county that is 3,200 people. Some of you all have neighborhoods that are larger than that. My whole county is 3,200 people. Can I tell you something? I've lived there for almost 20 years, and I'm not 100% sure my whole county has heard the gospel yet. That stinks. Can I tell you what I think the problem's been? Is that we haven't, the church that I'm a part of hasn't figured out one yet. All and one. We spend an awful lot of time fighting about the color of the carpet. Not really, but you understand what I'm saying. We, it's all of a sudden the piddly things. It's all of a sudden, you know, like, uh, Darren didn't say hi to me today, and now I'm offended someone, and it takes me four months to get over it. Hello? I, I really can't see. Are you guys here? <laughs> uh, uh, is that true or not true? Do we run into that or not run into that? 
And all of a sudden, it's like we, we let all in one go out the door for me and myself. We let all in one go out the door for uh, maybe even, I don't know, everything from the, you know, I, pastor didn't come visit me when I was sick or um, I didn't get a phone call on my birthday or um, all the way to, and I had this really good prayer for the end of service, but pastor, he wanted to take up an offering instead. <laughs> I'm just giving you examples out of my life. How's that? <laughs> I know that ain't all you. I know that isn't how you guys operate. But Paul is talking to these, okay, all of this stuff happened. And here we are, this letter is written about six to eight years later. And he's writing back to the people that had preached to all of Asia. So they've already gone a long ways, a lot further than maybe sometimes we go. They should understand the all-in-one. And yet Paul is writing from a Roman prison six to eight years later. And he goes, hey, knuckleheads. Hey, you've gotten comfortable. You've gotten used to your church. And you've let all of these things come between the one and the all. You for, you've forgotten, you've let go of the fact that God put grace on the inside of you to give a gift that helps each one of you walk together. And I'm telling you this morning, with the rest of what I'm going to say, God is calling this church to get together, to walk together as one in all that you do. And the way that's going to be accomplished is God bringing grace in his gift on your life so that you can look next to the person next to you. Listen, th what happened right here is a prime example of what I'm talking about. But can I tell you something? This can't happen at the prompting of four good songs and pastor going, listen, we got to minister to the body. It's got to happen out of I'm going to minister to the body. Why? Because I see it in my life. Because God's gifted it in my life. There's some of you sitting here. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going on it now. There's some of you sitting here right now where you're like, I can't add anything to this church. I'm going to just take until God fills me up. Can I tell you something? You've missed the all and the one. You're gifted. You're graced. God's put you here for a purpose. Three people believe that one. That's good. I'm winning you over one by one. I can tell. You got me on that one. <laughs> Are you hearing me today? I think I'm talking to some of you just to break down the disbelief that you can bring something to the people of God. Now, just so we're clear, I also want to be clear about this. I'm not talking about working outside of the leadership of the church. Okay, you need to know my heart. You need to know what I'm saying. Okay? Because Lone Ranger... Don't get it done either. That's not all. And it's, that's just one. <laughs> okay? So, like, here's, here's my ministry. I'm going to do it to the nth degree. No matter what anyone says, isn't going to work either, people. I think you know that. But I just want you to know from my heart, it's got to work inside the design and the pattern of God for the body of Christ. Okay? That's what we're going to talk about. Are you with me? Yeah. Everyone say Amen. So be it, and amen. <laughs> no. Let's move on. Let's go down to verse 11. Okay, so Paul's coming back to the church, and he's, he's like, hey, guys, you've gotten comfortable. You've, you've, you've realized the gift on the inside of you, but then it became about one, not all. It became about what's going on in my life, not the unity of the body. So verse 11 says this, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ. Woo! Until we all attain the unity of the faith. 
do you feel like Paul's just swinging a giant hammer right here? Like he's just over and over and over, right? Takes out the giant sledge. He's like, guys, figure this out. There's people that I've get, there's people that God's given to equip you and prepare you and help you understand what is your gift, what is your calling, how are you living, how are you part of the all? How are you part of the big one? Why? So again, that we can attain the unity of the faith. There, I, got, I got to say this. You, you all, um, you all, we all, us all, you all, you ought to thank God every day for the worship that goes on in this place. The presence of of the Lord is thick. Okay, and when I say thick, I don't mean God's fat. Okay? I mean the presence of the Lord is very um, easy to be aware of. Can I encourage you in something? Every Sunday, walk in and go, God, where are you? And then run there. Because if you'll run there, guess what? The person next to you will See, my answers are easy. I set you up. Even Derek can answer them, guys. Come on. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep you all in the message. You understand that? Okay? Until we all attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Lots of big words. Hang on. We'll get there. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. That's a mouthful. Can I tell you what it says in my English? Maybe not plain English, but my English. Here's what that says. We're a part of the body. And if we're going for Christ and letting Christ work in our life, then I can link arms and drag the rest of the body with me. Because I have a part. Because I have a part. We, I really need to be careful what I say, I guess. <laughs> we... Nah. I think a lot of times we in Christianity, we, we, we walk out and we're like, okay, I have this gift. I have this call. I, I, I go to church, right? And, and we, we, we almost get to this place where it's like, okay, I'm going to go to church today. And when the Spirit of God moves, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this, I'm going to let my gift go. Because that's what God wants. And so we, we, we let our gift go, right? We go pray for someone. Ooh. We go up and we say something in the mic. Ooh. We have a prophetic word. Ah. And then no one says anything. You ever have those moments? It's like, oh, that was good. <laughs> now for my next trick, we'll sing another song, right? Well, I'm the man of faith. Nobody recognized that today. Well, I, listen, I'm not picking on people. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about sometimes we get in our minds so much that we miss the part that God has for us. Sometimes we, we desire the human recognition so much that we forget who really recognizes us. Sometimes, and, and I got I to tell you this, if we're part of the body, the, the um, contentment can't come from the person on the stage. It has to come from the person in heaven. Wow. Yeah. 
But it's easy for us because here's the thing. <laughs> we started this whole thing in, in verse 1 by saying, live in a manner worthy of the calling. The problem is, is if I live six days of the week in a manner not worthy of the calling and then come in on Sunday in a manner worthy of the calling and I expect the calling to cover the six days. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. It's no wonder I sit there and all of a sudden I go, whoa, why isn't anybody looking at me? There ain't much to look at. And I'm not, listen, I know I'm talking hard, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I am trying to push open this door that helps you understand that you have a purpose, that you have a part, that what you do matters, that what God's given you matters. I think there's, I, I'm going to say it over and over. I think there's people, God's speaking to me. There's people here who it's like, I really have nothing to add. I'm telling you, some of you even look at, at the Marcus and family, you're like, there's nothing left to do in the church. They do it all. They play the piano, they sing, they dance, they shout, they do tumbles, they, they jump over buildings, they, they, you know. How do I be a part? Can I tell you something? Let God make you a part. Let the gift come out. Let his grace reside in you and go, how can I help? What can I do? Why? Because I got to join arms with somebody and we got to go somewhere together. There's a desire that God has to place on the inside of a people to cause growth in the people. And that desire is let's link arms. Let me know where I fit. Mm. Do I have the right church today? You got to wait for the water and then it. You got you to wait for the water. All right. So let me give you this. I'm going to close quickly. Not really, but quickly, quickly for me. How's that? I think there's three elements that are laid out in verses 11 through uh, 16 or 19 or whatever we read through. Uh, 16, yeah. That, that I feel are applicable to where this church is at. There's, th there's three elements, three things that God's going to bring some of you through. Listen to me. Okay? Not everyone's at the same place here. What I mean by that is, is spiritually. Okay? Some of you, as I'm, as I'm preaching this, it's like eye-opening. You're like, ooh, I've never heard anything like this. I'm not sure about that. Listen, that's okay, I'm, and, and that's fine. Um, I think God is going to speak to you out of that place. There's some of you that are like, ooh, breath of fresh air. I, I needed the little kick in the pants, okay? Some of you will kind of take it that way. It's crazy Missouri guy kicking me in the pants a little bit, okay? There's some of you that have been looking for this door to open, and, and where's this door? And I'm, I'm telling you right now, I, think, I feel like God's just, you know, bringing it open. And you're like, okay, God, as soon as you open that thing, we're going to walk through. And I think he's going to open some of that. And so there's different places. So I, I understand we're all in different places and things like that. And so I think you might identify with one of these elements a little more than the other. But just know that God's taking all of us as one through these elements. Amen? Amen. Okay. So verse 13, it says, Until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. This is, this is not going to be what you think. There's a cost. Now, wait a minute. You just read about measure of fullness of God. That's all. Yeah. Can I tell you something? The measure of the fullness of Christ, there's a cost. I got to tell you something. Jesus came to this earth not to be the king on a throne. He came to be the king on the cross. It was a cost that put him up there. And for us to grow in God, to grow in the gift of God, to grow in the grace of God, to be fit into the body, there's a cost. Both individually and corporately, there's a cost. Why? Because unity is hard. Isn't it such a painful word, unity? Yeah. Like, if I say unity, it's like, don't you all want to be uni in unity? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Let me back up. Verse 1. <laughs> let, me, let me try it again. You all want to be in unity? Yeah. Doesn't, that, doesn't that, I mean, it sounds so wonderful. You want people to care. You want people to talk to. You just want people. Man, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, I just want someone to go the same direction I'm walking so I don't have to walk alone. Right? You know how hard it is to get someone to walk in the same direction you're walking. It's hard. Can I tell you something? Relationships are messy. Let, let me, let, uh, relationships are, I've, I've realized, relationships are like working on a car. I, I've learned this from, from Christy's dad, okay? If I'm working on a car, I want to put a giant tarp under the whole car. <laughs> Y'all don't know why yet, do you? I'll tell you why. Cars leak things. They're messy, right? If I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to work on the car and change the oil, it's like I, don't wanna dr- I want my driveway clean. Anybody like me? Yeah. <laughs> About that unity thing. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's good or bad company right there. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> that's, it's like I, but I'm not a clean person by nature, which is really weird. But I want my driveway not to have spots. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, so I want to put this giant tarp under my car. Can I tell you something? Christy's dad taught me that don't matter. <laughs> dad, you out there, are you just like, are you, you're, are you with me on this one? Like, like I, I learned, because here's the thing. If I'm more worried about the driveway being clean, I'm not going to get the car fixed. Okay, he's out there. I heard you. I know you're out there now. Come on, help me preach this message, Dad. Come on now. Help me preach this thing. If I'm more worried about the the driveway being clean, I'm not going to get the car fixed. Can I tell you something? If we're so worried about relationships and unity being perfect, we ain't ever going to have it. If we're so concerned about not having a little bit of offense or, or not being able to do everything we want to do or not being recognized the way we want to be recognized, I'm telling you, we're not going to get the car fixed. We're not going to be the body the way the body's supposed to be. We got to understand it's going to get messy. It's okay. It's okay. Why? Why? Because someone's gift will eventually come along and figure out how to clean up what was the mess. If we're all in unity, if we're letting God speak to us and work in our gift, and we're letting other people work in their gift. Because that's how it's going to get cleaned up. I really, really learned this because I had to change the radiator on my truck all by myself. I don't know if you've ever tried to change a radiator, but that thing's got like 100 million hoses coming into it. And I missed one, and I pulled the radiator out, and the next thing you know, fluid down the driveway. Guess what? I was crying. I was weeping. I even FaceTimed, I even FaceTimed Dad. I was like, Dad, this thing's everywhere. How do I fix this? You know what? Never once did he say, well, clean up the mess first. <laughs> Matter of fact, he didn't even say, clean up the mess at the end. But he didn't. He said, here's how you fix the truck. Here's how you get the hose on. I couldn't get it. One of the hoses, one came off all by itself. The other one wouldn't come off at all. How do I get it fixed? He goes, here's how you do it. Sometimes you got to cut into the hose a little bit to give it some room. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we get cut into a little bit, but it creates the room we need to become the body of Christ. Can I tell you something? That's okay. A little bit of flesh cutting off is fine. As long as I see that it's the gift of God working in someone. As long as I let their gift. And as long as my, you see what I'm saying. Okay? So that's one thing you're all going to begin to notice as time goes on. There's going to be a cost. And sometimes it's going to cost us a little bit of our flesh. Sometimes it's just going to cost us not getting to do what we want to do. Welcome to the body of Christ. Right? Right? I'm sure Jesus didn't want to be up on that cross very much. But it's okay. Let's look at verse 14 and 15. Element number two. 
As a result, we are no longer to be uh, children tossed um, to and fro by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects of him, hey, who is the head, even Christ. I felt the Lord move on that one. Are you ready for this? This is not what you're thinking again. I'm going to surprise you. Were you surprised by the first one? Yeah, okay, all right. Here's the next one. Proper nutrition is vital for growth. Y'all didn't know this was in Ephesians 4, did you? (laughs) Mr. Health Man up there. (laughs) Proper nutrition is vital for growth. When Paul is talking about the trickery of men, he wasn't talking about unbelievers. I'll let that sink in. (laughs) Think about who he's talking to. Okay, I set this up for you. He's talking to the church at Ephesus. All of Asia heard the gospel, right? They They were in a town that was very well known for spiritual, magical things. He wasn't talking about, hey, don't be deceived by the warlock down the road. They already had that one figured out. They knew righteousness and unrighteousness. Instead, what's in his mind is probably similar to a letter that he wrote at the same time, Philippians, where he said, hey, there's men among you who have begun to use the gospel for their own gain, who have begun to preach things that aren't the church, to, that, are, that are preaching things that are causing themselves to be glorified instead of Christ as the head to be glorified. He said, don't be swept away by those people. You know, and in Philippians, he said, among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, who have left the faith for their own gain. I'm going to say this. I may never be asked to come back. (laughs) Except, you know, I have to because I'm family. (laughs) But here's the thing. If you're connected to the body of Christ and to, to maintain unity, you have to have the family values. You can't bring other family values into the family. And when Paul is talking about um, these preachers who are deceitful and scheming and not preaching Christ, he's not talking about unbelievers. He's talking about people who are doing things for their own gain. And healthy nutrition is this. Number one, it's not doing things for your own gain spiritually. But number two, it's being aware of who you're listening to. Okay, if we're talking about being spiritually fed, and, and I want to be very clear about this, okay? I have people all the time come to me and they ask me, hey, who, what preachers do you listen to? Tell me who's good to listen to. You know what I tell them? No one. Well, but what messages do you listen to? The Bible. But... The Bible. Okay, well, if you were going to listen to <laughs> right? They get down to there. If you, but if you were, listen, if I am, I'm going to listen to my pastor, I guess. Uh, yeah. Why? Because that's where the family values come from. You want to know how not to be de- uh, 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 deceived? You want to know how to be healthy? Intake the family values. You want to know how to be healthy? Intake the Bible. If you go, well, I don't know how to read the Bible, I don't understand it, take a class. Figure it out. I'm not getting amens anymore. (laughs) Am I over time? Learn the Bible. I tell people all the time, I'm like, well, I go read it all for myself. I think about it. I meditate on it. I pray about it. And then I go, okay, how does this line up with what my pastor's been preaching? And then I go, is there anyone else that might be saying this? And instead, what we do a lot of times in Christianity is we go, what's everybody saying? And then I pick what I like. Not healthy nutrition. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say this kindly. For what I'm talking about in terms of one, all, the gift of God, bringing us together as a church. 
we got to be healthy. We got to be healthy. And that means we got to understand the Bible. We got to understand what the family values are. Maybe not even according to the church, but according to Christ. Here's the family values. Here's who you are. Here's how it's supposed to be. Last one, and then I'm done. Oh, I had a really good. Don't encourage him, you all. <laughs> I got to eat lunch with that guy. I had a really good example. I'm not going to give it. And we're going to go on. Number three. Last verse, verse 16. From whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies. Say every joint. Every joint. Supplies. Every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part. It causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself. Every joint supplying, this is a big one. Okay, if we went back to verse 7, it says, Grace is given according to the gift. To, to be a person who supplies in the body is simply this. God, if you've graced me, help me know where I fit. If you've graced me, help me know where I fit. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out on the ledge again just a little bit and say, I, I believe there's people here who are listening to me. He said, you know, I know there's grace. I don't know how I fit. I know there's gifting, but I don't know how it fits. And in some ways, it's maybe made you frustrated. Maybe you've had a place where it's like, I just don't even know how to get this thing started. I'm, I'm, uh, there's a big hole in how I see things. I love this church, but I don't know what my part is. I don't know that God's necessarily going to fix all of that in one moment. He may. But I believe there's a building that's going to begin to happen where people are going to begin to see how they fit. And God wants to start that this morning. The problem is we may not know our gift. And there may be some of you that may not know, what is my gift? I just come to church. I show up. People love me. They hug me at the door. We chat. We talk. Someone cooks good barbecue, I'm sure. I enjoy all of that. I feel a part of that. But there's still something missing. Where do I fit? What's my gift? Maybe we don't know how to use our gift. A lot of the times that's because I haven't linked arms yet. Maybe it's because I haven't understood the one walking together. And sometimes it's just, I don't know where my gift fits. I need someone to help and tell me, where do I fit here? Give me vision for where I fit. Give me purpose for where I fit. Sometimes it's just God simply going, here's how you fit. A lot of times, though, in the middle of that, the problem is that we focus on us rather than the body. It, 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 uh, you know, if you think about, I played basketball when I was younger. And um, my senior year of high school, I had, a, I had an injury. I landed on someone's foot. My foot turned sideways. Um, heard a pop. You know, immediately knew there was a problem. Uh, people carried me down to the trainer trainer can't see anything but black and blue got to go to the emergency room go to the emergency room ended up had a very unique injury the the ligament on the outside of my ankle connected to the bottom of my I don't know what it's called the outside of my foot bone there actually tore the bone in half so the ligament didn't break the bone broke pulled the bone in half and um, the solution was simply not to use it and hope that it grew back together. 
That doesn't sound very promising. That was, that was not what I wanted to hear. And so for weeks, I was on crutches, didn't use it. Went in for x-rays. Bone was growing back t- together in places, but it hadn't grown all back together. And um, it was getting to the point where it was like, okay, is there surgery? Can we know where that's at? You know, we could put a pin in it, but we can't make it grow back together. And literally, this is what the doctor said. And I, I remember this like it was yesterday. He said, all those little pieces have to fit back together the way they came apart for that bone to be whole. The way it broke, all those little pieces have to come back together. And I didn't know it at the time. I was just mostly discouraged. But it became a really interesting analogy to me to understand fit in the body of Christ. You know, a lot of times we talk about the body, and it would be weird to take your ear and stick it on your knee. One, you'd be, you know, you'd be hearing some weird things. It'd be weird to take a finger, right, and stick it on your chest so it's pointing out. We would think that's weird. It would be weird to take your ankle and put it where your elbow is. Are you following me? But, and, and we can look at that and go, yes, those are obvious places where fit doesn't work. I want to, uh, uh, you know, th- those things don't make sense. But what I realized is sometimes we can even be in the right place, but we haven't fit together yet. And we need God to speak to us. And we need God to tell us, okay, how does the gift fit here? How does, how do I fit here? Or just simply, God, how do I, how do I know that you've put me where I belong? And I, I Again, the the point of what I'm trying to say is God's getting ready to grow this church. I'm going to say this, both spiritually and in numbers. The spiritual has to happen before the numbers will come, though, or it's going to tear you apart just like my bone got torn apart. And people will, will be trying to fit, and it won't fit. But if you're going to start adding some knees and some elbows and some radius and ulni and whatever other body parts we have then the body has to be put together and has to grow together the way it is but we can't do that if we don't know how we fit if we don't have God speaking to us about that and again I don't think one day is going to answer that I just want to push that door open is that okay you want to jump in here you want me to keep going Here's what I here's what I believe, and I'll I'll, I'll say this and get it, and then if if Rich wants to, I felt like God told me today that I there is a grace and a gift for the Spirit of God to start a work on the inside of some lives to show you where you fit, to show you how you fit, and you may be in different spots. Okay, I'm not, I'm not just talking about only fit, but you may not know your gift. You maybe you haven't counted the cost. Maybe you don't know about that cost thing yet. How much do I want to buy in? Maybe maybe you're trying to figure out the how much how do I have healthy nutrition so that I know what unity in this church looks like. So I know what I'm walking with people in. Or maybe you really are here and you're like, God, I just need you to turn the gift over on the inside of me. So I know how to fit in this place that you've put me for this season and this time so that this body can grow together, so that unity can come among us. And I'm, I'm going to make this very simple. I feel like if it's okay with you all, I feel like there's a grace and a gift that God has put on the inside of me this morning to pray with you. And if you're in one of those spots and you just say, you know what, I need that to open up in my life. I need, I need to know those, one of those three things in my life. And I just want the Spirit of God to come and speak to me about it. I would just invite you, I'm going to open this altar. I just invite you to come. Let me pray with you for a few minutes. If that's you, come on, as she sings this, why don't you come forward? Let me pray with you.
Rich, Rich uh, just reminded me, and, and um, I feel like this is important to understand too. You know, the church, the body of Christ, isn't a. And I was trying to make this point earlier, and I, don't, I probably didn't get it across well. It's not a Sunday thing. It's an everyday thing. The the gift, the fit, is a Sunday morning. The gift and the fit is every day. It's God speaking to us every day. It's God using us every day. It's it's in talking to people. It's in ministering to our neighbors. It's in it's in it is in hanging out, being together, helping each other, knowing when people are sick. I I get a lot more out of people when they know I'm sick and it's not the pastor than when it is the pastor. Why? Because that's how we fit together. That's how we're one. And so even, even if you're, you know, if you're thinking like, yeah, Sunday morning, big deal. You know, that's, that's not ever me. I'm not, I'm not, that's not even my personality. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, it is, but it's not. I'm talking about, God, how do I be this to my neighbor? How do I be this to other people in the church? How do I do this on Wednesday? How do I do this on Thursday, Friday, Monday? Okay, so if even that's in your heart, and that's, that's what's going on in you. I'd invite you to come up. The Spirit of God is here. 